coming back to Wisconsin in the late March and still living in our RV, which is not a four season, was crazy enough. Now we're thinking about doing something even crazier. Let's go down that road. Hello, faithful people. I'm Gary. And I'm Moraline. That was kind of a mixer-upper. If you've been watching our videos for a long time, you know I usually start out. But that's not the only mixed-up thing we're thinking. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, on our way back from Florida, sunny, beautiful Florida, lush, green Florida, we came back. We dodged some storms along the way. We had to take shelter by a few churches, which was wonderful, very blessed that that happened. The storms uh, either went around us or we were protected by the church itself. So during that, that really stormy week that, that really hit the south really bad in some of the states like Mississippi, Arkansas, Missouri, um, that's when we were in Tennessee. <laughs> and we learned that in Wisconsin, when you talk about the north, central, and south, Central is the middle of the state, right? Well, in Tennessee, it's it's a short state, but it's wide. So they consider Central to be going this way. And we thought we were safe because we were in Northern Tennessee. <laughs> but we were in Northern Tennessee in the central part where the storms were headed. <laughs> Oh, okay, but we were protected by the church. That was really, really a godsend. And we are very grateful to the church members there in Clarksville. Um, then, uh, when we got back to Wisconsin, it had just snowed. And there were, the, we had two places where we could go. Campgrounds were not open yet. They're just opening this week, actually. This is the middle of April. Um, and a lot of them are seasonal type of campgrounds, so you can only stay there from April until October. And then you have to be out, or you just leave your RV and locked up and winterized and whatever and leave it. That's a lot of the problems in Wisconsin right now. We didn't even know where we were gonna dump our tanks for sure. The first time we dumped our tanks on the way to our daughter, where our daughter lives in southern Wisconsin. And then we went to, uh, the second time we went to Camping World again because there was still nothing open or available near us. Camping World was the closest. And we have been to our daughters a few times to see the babies, uh, twin boys that were born in February. And then we've been to our oldest sons in another town, and that has been, uh, he's been going through a lot of health issues for several months. There's been all kinds of tests done on him. They are not finding anything. There's one test, an EMG, that should have been done a while back, and the, his primary canceled it because he didn't think he needed it. And that's the one that's going to give us the answers to a lot of things. That's coming up May 1st, unless he can get in on a cancellation, which we're really praying for. We've been back and forth between our daughter and our sons, helping both of them, and several times. And we're looking at a, a town or a few different towns in between where we could maybe get a base home. After all that, I just realized what I didn't finish telling you. When we when we first came back to Wisconsin, we were we had two places we could stay. We had permission from a church that we could stay in their church parking lot, and they would give us water and electric. Thank you. And then the second one was some friends of ours have a shop that they rarely need to go to, and it's just a small little parking lot, but it's it's just right for us and he also gave us water and electric. So that's how we were able to stay up here in Wisconsin in the cold. Well, then it got warm. 
two days after we got back, there was another big set of storms that came through and we were in the part that was the threat of tornadoes. So we were at the church parking lot for that one and we were in the church basement for over an hour that night. <sighs> no damage. The storms were very close. There was a tornado that touched down less than a mile from where we were, but it was down and up real fast evidently and it didn't do much damage. We drove through there later and we didn't see much for damage. Anyway, all these things are happening and then in the meantime we're thinking maybe we should get a base, a base home and we're finding out we can't afford very much. We've never owned our own home. We always lived in parsonages before. That's a church, uh, a church provided home. And so we were never, we never owned a home until we bought our RV. That was the, this is the first home we've ever owned. We paid cash for her. She was not very expensive. We got her for less than $7,000. And um, we've done a lot to her. She's built like a tank. She's awesome, but she's 23 years old. We've talked about maybe getting a different RV, a newer one, so that we can get into more RV parks that aren't so snobby and say no to people who have RVs that are older than 10 years old. We've ran into that a lot. So now we're thinking maybe either getting an apartment or maybe buying a mobile home. And we're on our way to go look at one right now. We looked at a 2018 mobile home. The price was right, 53.9. Site was good. The site was nice. Came with a little, um, looked like a, a new utility shed, a really nice little utility shed. The lawn would be small, so it wouldn't be real demanding time-wise. floor plan was great. It had uh, one bedroom and bathroom on one end and one bedroom and bathroom on the opposite end. So if we had company or visitors that wanted to come and stay with us for a little while, they'd have their own separate space. But the person that lived there before was a heavy smoker. And we smelled it as soon as we walked in. We're very sensitive to cigarette smoke. And we walked in and the first thing she mentioned when, is that they're going to be painting the ceiling because the ceiling's kind of yellowed. They took off all the, what do you call, um, all the window blinds. They took off all the window blinds, replaced those already. They already did an ionizer. There was some damage on one of the walls that they patched. So that wall definitely has to be painted and probably all of them should be painted. Yeah. They've cleaned them, they washed them. She suggested take out the carpeting and replace it with like maybe a wood flooring or something like that, which would be nice. While we were filming this a few days ago, we got several phone calls right in a row from family members and they were pretty important that we needed to take. 
we're going to continue where we left off. And actually, a lot of the, the, the idea of this whole, this whole video has changed with what we have found out since we did that. And this is going to be more about finding affordable housing. More about the home first, though. The, the previous owner could not afford to live there anymore, and we're going to speculate on that after we give you some more information. And I don't know where she moved to. The apartments aren't cheap in that area. That was one big problem. And then um, the park bought her home. They put in a new electric water heater. They're going to put a new roof on it. Yes, that was a big one. Yeah. They were going to put a new roof on it because there were some small leaks in the house. There were a lot of good things about it. Um, there were a lot of, it, it, there was a, a nice part of the park that compared to the other side of the park, which was really crammed together. But the big problem was the fact that the smoke. You, I mean, they had already ionized it. They had already taken down those blinds. They had already wiped down the walls. They had already done all those things. Wood taking out the flooring and replacing it and putting paint on the walls help? Probably, but probably not enough. But the real issue that came up was the lot rent. The lot rent was $698. And it didn't include anything. The lot rent in some parks will include garbage pickup or some of the utilities or property taxes are sometimes included. This did not include anything except the piece of cement that it was on. We did try to get clarification on that to just to make sure so we had something in writing. But so far we haven't gotten anything back from them. No. And uh, yeah. And we've been talking to more and more people and finding out more things. So I started doing my own little investigation. <laughs> <laughs> because some of the parks that we looked at a year ago, all of a sudden have this same logo on all their signs. They all have the same original name, but now they have this Bayshore Homes RHP Properties logo on all of them. So let's look into that a little more. Some of you might think, well, that's that's a lot of money, which it was, um, $700 a month. If you were to live there for 10 years, you're going to pay way more for that than the mobile home itself. It was $53,000 for the mobile home. Over 10 years, you'd be paying $83,000 just for the lot rent. And that was a big eye-opener. So we started looking into some other places. Um, there was another park in another nearby community that did not have Bayshore on them. And it was uh, $400 a month. And it included all your utilities except electric. It included your garbage, your sewer, your water for 400 a month. They were full. No openings. Didn't know when they'd have any. Hmm. Another park that we really, really, really like, it's a 55 plus a community. Very nicely kept. Everything about it is just really, really nice. And big, wide areas. They all have parking or garages. They all have something off street. It's just a really nice community. And that one is three twenty-five a month lot rent, plus you pay property taxes based on the unit that you're buying. So in the case of a brand new one, your property tax would be about one hundred seventy-five dollars a month, making the total for your lot rent and your property taxes about five hundred a month. That's a little easier to swallow because you're getting something out of it. The seven hundred dollars a month for nothing. Yeah, the really troubling part is that we noticed there there was at least four 
mobile home parks within a very short area that all had this same logo on it of Bayshore Homes RP, RHP properties. So I started doing some investigating and I found out that they bought 41 communities just in Wisconsin last year. And they are in 30 states and growing. Now, the good thing about this corporation buying them is that what they're doing is they're making improvements. Uh, one of them, we noticed that they now have a brand new playground because it's an all ages mobile home community. They also call them manufactured home communities. And so that was one of it, that some of it, they're gonna improve the roads, they're going to improve some of the sites. Uh, they're probably going to get rid of some of the really bad older ones that have been needing a lot of care and maybe we'll replace them with something new. I don't know where those people will go or if they wait until they don't want to live there anymore and then they do that. But what we're finding out is that because they're raising the lot rent by almost double in some places compared to what it was a year ago, there are people now that can't afford to live there. And that's what we suspect happened to the lady who had this particular mobile home was that she couldn't afford to live there anymore, she said. Well, it could be because they raised the rent by twice as much. That, and then you add the other things that they're fixing on the home, you know, like the roof. That needed to be replaced whether she had it or not so there's other expenses but my goodness that increase in lot rent is a big one yeah and it was only a 2018 so we're not sure why some of those things would have needed to be fixed so soon um yeah that was troubling as well it maybe wasn't built as well as some of the other mobile homes we've looked at don't yeah. know things that we really liked about it. Mm -hmm. And you could do anything you wanted with the yard as long as it looked nice. Mm -hmm. That's not an issue for us. We like to have things looking nice too. <laughs> so they're making all these improvements. That's, that's a good thing because a lot of mobile home parks that we've looked at were pretty crummy. <laughs> and that was why we didn't really want to live in some of them or even look at, consider them before. Now, I don't know how they're going to do some of the things they're proposing because in some of the communities, the main road coming in, that's where a lot of people are parking. They're like like street parking because they don't have driveways. They don't have room for driveways. No, unless yeah. they take out some units, but it sounds like they want to grow their communities. So I'm not sure how they're going to do this unless they're going to buy up some land that's around them don't know but they have uh, currently over 370 communities in 30 states with over 80,000 home sites available and the plan is that they're going to are going to add 500 new manufactured homes in the Midwest and spending 7.5 million dollars to do it in the first 18 months of ownership and this just happened since September of 22. Mobile homes rarely increase in value. If they are maybe on a private property they might. They might get more for the whole thing with the land and everything. I wish that you could buy your lot. That would be really awesome. If you could buy your lot with the mobile home, that would make more sense. But renting it for $700 a month, uh-uh. And we found out that some of those same communities in other states are charging as much as $1,100 per month just for the lot rent. And some of that... Some of that's going to be on the size of the, the home. Some of those can be double wides, but it's and, also location. And some will have garages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's, there's different things that can bring that up that high, but still. <laughs> it's a lot. So 
at one time, mobile homes were always considered a more affordable option for people, but evidently that's changing. As of 2020, 22 million Americans live in manufactured home parks. That's a lot of people that are depending on being able to live affordably in a mobile home park. We are also looking at the option of a stick and brick. Talking to a mortgage lender, he's our son-in-law, so we have a little in there. We can ask him a lot of questions. And he was telling us that it would be cheaper to finance a house than a mobile home. Okay. We're looking at some of those. Most of the ones that are affordable in our price range are in Milwaukee. And if you live in Milwaukee, I'm sorry, um, there are places in Milwaukee we would not want to live. And some of these houses are so cute. Um, $85,000 built in the 20s. We haven't looked at them. We don't know what's all been done to them. There's been some cosmetic stuff done to some of them, like paint and things like that. But we don't know what the wiring is like. We don't know what all those kinds of things would be like. And we don't know the neighborhoods. And if you can't go outside, go for walks and feel safe and things like that, we're just not. And we're not big city people. That's the big thing. That's the yeah. biggest <laughs> part. We're just not going to want to live in a big city. And it's not near our kids. That's the other point is that we aren't just looking for a house to live in in Wisconsin. We're looking for something that's close to our children. Our three of our children live in Wisconsin. One lives out in British Columbia, Canada. So we're looking for the one that's the closest to our Wisconsin kids. And we found a community that's really kind of centralized for all of them. And that's where we're really hoping to be. And that includes about four or five different communities within a small area that we could maybe get something. And nothing is coming up. In fact, as of right now, America, the United States, is short 7 million homes. The inventory is that low. They're, they're, they need 7 million more homes to fulfill all the people that need them. Renting is also a problem because renting is also short and they are about the same number, 7 million. So about 14 million short on having homes for people to live in. In case you're wondering, we are not looking for a home to get off the road. Not yet. <laughs> that we are still going to travel because we really enjoy that. And we, we really get to a point when we're in one place for a while, we start, yeah, we need to get going. <laughs> and when Gary serves church, church vacancies every winter in a warmer climate, we always run into that where after we've been there for so many months, even though we enjoy the people and the church and the community, we always get to that point where we're looking forward to getting back on the road again. Um, what this is for is... First of all, our kids are needing some help with some things. Uh, one has some big health issues. Still not sure what's going on with that. Um, and there are some big things that could be that could mean that we really need to be close by to help. You know, most people look at moving closer to their kids so their kids can take care of them. <laughs> We're kind of the opposite right now, but that could change. You never know. <laughs> we don't plan on that happening, but who, who plans yeah. on that, you know? Um, so there's also that possibility we, we might want to be closer to family for our sakes as well. Another factor is that our home is 23 years old. And, and we're talking about our RV. People always say, oh, you own a home? Yeah, it's our RV. <laughs> We've been living in her for full time for six years and we love it. And, but it, she is 23 years old. But there are a lot of campgrounds that will no longer allow you to be in a park if your RV 
is more than 10 years old. When we serve a church, um, sometimes some of the churches, we can stay in the church parking lot. That's worked out okay. But in other cases, they don't have the room for us to park there. So we are, they put us in an RV park. And if they have that 10 year rule, that's gonna really put a crinch in things. Another thing that happened to us was last summer. Um, you may remember if you've been watching our channel for a while, you know that we were in a surprise hail storm. There was no warnings, nothing. It just came out of the blue. It was actually a nice day. And all of a sudden we just got slammed with golf ball size hail for about 20 minutes. And it didn't cause any big issues with ours. No broken windows or anything like that. The roof was okay. And Gary redid part. Uh, you you put Re another coating. Yeah, recoated it. And that seemed to cover any of the issues for the time being. But we don't know the long-term damage. We don't know what yeah. structural things could have maybe happened. As far as we know, we're okay. But it, it, it caused a bunch of little dents in her. And um, so that's, um, we had the choice at the time of scrapping her <laughs> or taking a little less money and keeping her. We, we have liability. We can't get comprehensive. Yes. So if we get another hailstorm or serious damage to it, it's all out of our pocket. Mm -hmm. There's no insurance to cover it. Yeah. And it is 23, year, 23 years old. <laughs> and finding, that was the thing too at the time, that was in uh, 2022, RV prices were still really high. They still are. Uh, we've been, we keep getting ads from Camping World and other places and that they're 50% off. And it's like, off of what? Mm -hmm. You know, they're still really, really high priced. And, uh, compared to several years ago, a few years ago. Uh, it's just really gone up. And the big thing is every time we get severe weather, I think after being in, in here, when that hailstorm hit, that has really caused a little PTSD in me for sure. I get really panicky when there's severe weather. So you know, the, the roads of faith thing is, is great when the roads are good and the weather is nice. <laughs> But it gets to be a little more challenging when the clouds build and the winds swirl around and you just don't know what's coming. Yeah, so we always pray for protection. And so far, God, of course, has been protecting us. And He always does. He always does. <laughs> it's just we as sinful human beings don't always trust that. <laughs> and and uh, We're easily yeah. rattled at times. Very, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so, so high winds, hail, tornadoes. That's another reason we're thinking maybe it's time to look at a house, but those can blow away too. Uh -huh. And we've seen communities completely leveled by a tornado. So I, I don't know. So wherever you are, yeah, you're, you're with us on a road of faith too. <laughs> <laughs> As we mentioned, we have another daughter that is in British Columbia, Canada with her family. And um, if they were to come to visit like they did last summer, we didn't have a lot of warning. They just all of a sudden, I think they were planning it, but they didn't know if it would work out. So they didn't want to disappoint anybody. So uh, they all of a sudden decided with just a couple of weeks notice that they were coming and we were thrilled. They were, it was, a, it was hard for them to have places to stay when they got back by family. Our oldest son's home is full. They have five kids and a dog and two cats and a small house. Our other son didn't have a place for them to stay. We didn't have a place for them to stay. They were able to stay with our youngest daughter, but now she's got the twins and they had to make some big changes in their house. And now they don't have the room either for our daughter, son-in-law, three children and two dogs to come and visit. <laughs> so that was one of the thoughts too, as well, if we had a, a two bedroom or maybe a small three bedroom house, that they could come and stay with us. Um, but we can also just pay for hotel <laughs> <laughs> and that would be a lot cheaper. Yeah. Um, we've also been looking at apartments. Again, that's a rental thing. You pay the rent and then that's gone. But with a rental, we don't have property taxes. We don't have 
um, any upgrades we have to do. We don't have any, um, uh, if something breaks or goes wrong or the water heater goes out or uh, the dishwasher goes out or refrigerator or whatever, they are responsible for replacing those things if you have a good landlord. And those are things that would be off of our shoulders as far as extra expenses. We don't know for sure how things are going to work for us living in this area. Mm -hmm. We really like this area. There's a great church here. There are a couple of churches around here that we could go to that are in our synod. Gary has opportunity to do some filling in as a pastor once in a while while we're in Wisconsin, which would maybe make it a little more fun in the winter as we could travel more. Instead of filling in at a church in the winters, we could kind of flip that a little bit. And being in an apartment, we would that'd be easier to leave. It's a relatively short-term commitment compared yeah. to a multi-year loan. Yeah. Will hmm. interest rates come down? Will there be a housing crash? Some predictions say there will be. Some say there won't. Some people say, well, you can always refinance. If the interest rates come down. Inflation, recession. A lot of questions. Yeah. So would being in an apartment maybe be a better thing for us right now? Something to pray about. Another thought that crossed our minds was if we were to rent for a while and save up more money so we could make a bigger down payment. As it is, we're making a pretty, we could offer a pretty good sized down payment. We've saved up a lot for that, but uh, we could keep, we could earn more money. Um, the only problem is we have one vehicle. So if I were to get a job in addition to Gary doing something, yeah. One of us would have to walk. because <laughs> we're not going to buy another vehicle. <laughs> so that, that's another consideration. We have a lot of a lot of things to work through. Um, at this point, we are not desperate. We have a home. Even mm -hmm. though some people don't think it is one, we know that this is a home. We have a kitchen. We have a, we have a living room. We have a bedroom. We have a bathroom. We have everything we need. Don't forget the refrigerator. Well, the refrigerator is part of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So we have everything we need. <laughs> we have a roof over our heads. We have wheels so we can move, which has been really handy because when we first got back, we were in the community where our daughter lives and we were just not even a mile from her house. So we could stay there. And uh, if we need to help our oldest son and move over by him, we could park in his driveway now that the, that the street, the alternate parking and all that stuff is done with for winter. Uh, we can now park in their driveway. So we'd be really handy there. It's nice having our home on wheels. It is. And it's worked out really well for serving the vacancies. There's been several cases where, they, where there was no parsonage and the church would have had to have rented an apartment or something for us. And that costs a lot more than the lot rent at a RV park. Mm -hmm. And by the time this is up, we should know uh, the, uh, some answers for our oldest son. He's going to be having an EMG um, in May. And so that will be, maybe give us some answers or some direction. Some interesting things we've been finding out on our own. Um, things that were missed, that weren't dealt with by two or three doctors that he's seen. Yeah, so we're doing a lot of uh, checking on things ourselves as well. We know that God has a plan. Sometimes I wish he'd send us a text or an email <laughs> or something. <laughs> but uh, we have a home and we're just going to take it day by day, keep looking, keep Keep, keep searching, keep thinking on these things. And it's all part of the adventure, isn't it? Yes, it, it is. <laughs> it is. 
And we know people that live in their cars because they can't afford anything else. They make it work. We know a lot of people that live in vans that sold their homes, their stick and built brick homes, and they moved into vans that they fixed up like a little RV. And that's all they have. And that's home. They understand what we are, where we're coming from. And it's really good to talk with people that are like-minded like that. But when you talk to a lot of people who live in houses, they all think you should really live in houses. Affordable housing is really your, your, what your definition is. Um, I had a friend who said, well, there's some affordable housing where we live. And I looked at where they lived and the starting price was $325,000. I'm like, your definition of affordable is not the same as ours. And so the, I got to keep all that in mind too. We can't afford a lot that could change. There's some things we can do to change that. And we're looking into those options as well. But for now, we're just going to keep looking and praying. Not panic. Until a storm comes. <laughs> what do you think about all this? What do you think about the ideas of corporations buying up some of these mobile home parks or corporations even outside our country buying regular homes and in neighborhoods. What do you think of all that? Is that a good idea? Is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? From what we're seeing, it's kind of mixed. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you have any ideas on affordable housing, I would love to build an earth home. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be tornado proof. That would be really cool, <sighs> but they're not cheap and it requires buying land and that's not cheap either. <laughs> Let us know your comments down below. Stay tuned. Keep watching. We'll be filling you in as we go here. Uh, there's a, we're kind of on the fence of if we should be doing some improvements in our RV. There's some things that we're thinking about doing that are we, you know, should we do them if we have to sell her <laughs> or should we save the money and put it toward you know the stuff we're looking at isn't going to cost a lot of money and it would make it nice for us while we're living in it stay tuned we'll be showing <laughs> all those things as well and I'm sorry this got so long we just really started out with this one thing and then it just kind of blew up into other things that we didn't know about. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. We appreciate you watching it and joining us and, and uh, traveling this roads of faith with us. And make sure you check out our Facebook page because I put a lot of things on there that I don't put in our videos. Until next time, God bless. God bless.